Hi, this is Umair back with another video. In this video, I'll talk about uh, scene navigation, page navigation, and universal windows applications. And again, that I told you that I'll be covering major topics in this video series. So uh, let's go and do the page navigations. But first of all, we need to uh, change the background of our scene in our new project. So I will remove all these style resources and I will give it a light blue color all right and inside this grid element I need to create some uh, buttons uh, that will be clicked to navigate to our different pages so I will create grid dot row definitions and inside it I will create two row definitions so I will write row definition height equals to two star all right and I will end this up and I will copy this line and paste it below okay and I will give it 10 star so the whole page will be divided into 12 blocks and the two blocks will be contained by the first row and the 10 blocks will be contained by the second row all right and after that outside the ending element of grid dot row definition I will create a stack panel and inside this stack panel I will give it some properties and the row number the first stack panel will contain the buttons the row is 0 and orientation of this stack panel is horizontal margin 10 0 10 and 0 all right, let's press enter and I will give it some horizontal alignment and that has to be center and vertical alignment has to be center as well all right so I think these are the properties that I need for this stack panel now I will just add the stack panel and inside this stack panel I need to add few button elements okay so I will write X colon name to give it a name so I will write btn1 for the button one name all right and I will give it some content page one and width is auto all the text that it will have will be uh, that will set the width for this button so I will write my margin for it and the margin would be 10 0 10 and 0 okay and uh, we need to give it a background color so I will write background and it will have white okay and we need to give it a font size 50 and the last one is I'm not gonna do it right now because I want to show it that how this thing is can be done alright so I will close this button element so you can see there is a uh, button uh, there is a font size shouldn't be 50 so let's uh, bring it down to 30 all right now it's uh, covering up the proper space in our uh, 2 by 12 blocks of rows okay so now if I double click on this button it's gonna go to my main page dot xaml dot cs file and create a click event for this button so I will double click on this button and you can see it has gone to the main page dot xaml dot cs file and it has created a button one underscore click event and whenever that button will be clicked uh, over compiler will come to this function and whatever we want to do we can define in this function alright but before that uh, I need to copy this one paste and paste I'm going to change the name of my button button 2 and button 3 for the click events I'm going to change button 2 click and button 3 click all right uh, but uh, we haven't created our button 2 and button click events in our backend uh, main page.xaml.cs file uh, what we can do is uh, we can just uh, double click on actually we need to change the content as well 
for our help so I'm going to change the content page 2 and page 3 alright so I'm gonna double click my first select the page 2 button and I'm gonna double click this page 2 uh, it is not being let's click on it and now I'm let's select the element from this XAML file and after that uh, I'm going to double click this button so it has created my button to underscore click event uh, if I want to add the same event for two different buttons I could use the button one underscore click for it so let's select the button 3 and double click on page 3 so we have created our uh, click events in our um, button 1 button 2 and button 3 in our main page dot xaml dot cs file now if I click on button 1 uh, it should have uh, uh, area below these buttons it should show our page 1 and if we click on page 2 it should show our page 2 but first we need to create our pages so let's go to our project and I'm gonna right click on, on my project add and I will click on new item okay and I will click on blank page from the top and I'm gonna name it blank page 1 and I will add this one and same as I will add other pages from it as well okay so I will add new item and it has already changed the name blank page 2 so I'll go with it add and it has created our page 2 I'm going to right click it add new item and I will create a blank page 3 alright so we have over three pages in our project now we need to give it uh, give pages some text on it so that whenever we could click on any button uh, we should see the difference that this is this is actually the page one and this is actually the page two so I'll open up the blank page one first and inside my XAML let's click on this one to bring it on the vertical column this uh, column right side okay so I will write first of all I'm going to change the background for it and I will give it a yellow color okay and inside it I'm going to give it a text block and I will give it text page 1 okay and horizontal alignment is center and vertical alignment is center and font size is 100 okay alright so this is our page 1 I'm going to copy this code let's uh, close this blank page one dot xaml file save changes all right and let's go to a solution explorer open blank page two click on this icon and i'm going to paste it right here and instead of yellow i'm going to change it to green and page one will be changed to page two all right and let's save this file as well and close this file and for the page uh, blank page 3 dot xaml let's click on it and I'm going to paste that code inside it as well and I'm going to change it to red and page 1 to page 3 alright and we have created over all three pages now we need to go back to our main page dot xaml dot cs file and inside it I need to navigate to different pages when button 1 click button 2 click and button 3 click alright so I can do it uh, by <clears throat> writing frame actually uh, let's go back to our main page dot XAML I need to define some area that where should we show that particular page alright uh, we haven't defined in here yet so I will use uh, an element called frame that is used to show other pages in one page okay so I will write frame and I will give it a background to Azure and give it a grid dot row this should be in the first row alright and I will give it a name frame and using this name I'm going to navigate to different pages alright and I will give it some margin so 10 10 10 and 10 I can simply write 10 as well uh, so horizontal alignment center vertical alignment center 
as well now i need to give it a width and height so let's give it a width of 1000 and height of let's say 600 all right and let's end this frame so this is the frame that we have added under these buttons it has name frame and with this name i'm going to uh, put other pages inside this frame okay so i will just copy the name of this frame and go back to my uh, this main page.xaml.cs file and i will write the name control v the name of that frame dot and it's going to give me some navigation functions so i will write navigate inside it i will write type of the name of that page so the name of my page is blank page one okay and i will copy this one paste it right here and paste it right here as well i'm going to change the blank page one to two when we click on button two and three when we click on button three okay so now let's go and check this out if our navigation is working or not uh, just by clicking on local machine button at the top okay so it's gonna run my application so so our application has started now i need to click on page one and it has loaded page one on this area and if i click on page two page three uh, but we also need to load page one at the start of our application if our when our application was started there was a white uh, background so we need to add page load page one at the startup application so let's close this application and main page uh, dot xaml dot cs file and this is where our application is initialized after initialization of our application we can just copy this line and paste it right here as well okay and it's going to load page one at the start of our application so let's click on a local machine and when our application is started uh, it's going to load the page one so you can see the page one is loaded page two page three and the page one uh, this is the simplest version of navigation next uh, i will talk about the next and the previous pages navigation so let's come back to our main page dot xaml file and i'm going to update this code uh, after adding uh, this stack panel i'm going to create another stack panel uh, under these three buttons and those buttons will have uh, will be back and the next buttons okay so i'm going to copy this stack panel and paste it below and i'm going to remove one button from here okay and it's going to give me error because i need to change the name of these buttons and i need to give it a name let's remove one and i will write back underscore button and for the second button i will write back underscore no next underscore button all right and inside it i need to actually it's on the same row I need to create three rows now so I will go at the top and just copy this one and I'm gonna paste it right here so we have three rows okay and for the frame I will change the row grid row from one to two so that the frame comes at the uh, bottom and inside this tag panel I need to change the grid row to one so our buttons are at the uh, second row all right so we have added our page one and the page two but uh, in order to add our click events we need also need to have let's copy this one the name of button and paste it before the underscore click okay and this just copy the next underscore button and paste it below this one okay if we don't create the click property and uh, double click any button it's going to create this property with the name of that button plus concatenating the underscore click itself okay so uh, that's been done now we need to just uh, select this button and double click on uh, page one i need to change the content as well so i will write prev and for the button two let's change the content to next all right 
and just click on the button element and double click on previous and it's gonna create the event in my backend file that is our main page.xaml.cs file let's click on the button for the next and double click on this button to create the event function at the backend now in order to uh, keep on detecting that if there is another page in the frame the stack of frame then navigate to the next page okay so I will write inside it if frame dot can go back it's gonna check that uh, actually this is the back button so I can write can go back okay so it's gonna check if the frame contains any previous pages or not then we can navigate to our previous page so I can use the name of my frame and I will write go back okay I'll copy this function this code and I will write can go forward forward and I will write frame dot go forward all right now in order to check this one I need to first store different pages in my frame so I will click on the my local machine to run my application and see if the navigation works with the uh, page one page two page three buttons and it should also work with the previous next uh, buttons as well but if I click on my next and previous button it's not going to uh, happen anything because this frame doesn't have any history any record uh, of having different pages alright so I need to click on this page 2 page 3 page 2 page 1 now the frame is having the history inside it now if I click on next uh, there is a previous and if I click on previous there is another page alright and if I go previous and the previous page alright now our frame has uh, the history now if I click on next you can see it has a history next 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 all right uh, it's gonna work as a stack that uh, any page that is on the top uh, will be uh, popped first if I click on any previous button or any next button so uh, this was a basic tutorial on the page navigation if you want to create different pages for your application so in the next video, I will talk about uh, creating adoptive user interface for your universal windows application so that your application may work on both mobile devices and desktop devices and it should automatically uh, change the position of different elements at a proper position. Okay, on mobile and desktop. So make sure you like this video, subscribe my channel and thanks for watching this tutorial.